this project means more to me than, than I can possibly say. The life of Matoaka, also known as Pocahontas, is a chilling reality of the literal horror of invasion, of enslavement, of kidnapping, of rape and murder, and how it can be funneled down so far from reality that it can be made into a children's movie, perpetuating lies and the fetishization of indigenous women. And it's taken over 400 years to tell her story correctly. Now more than ever, it's time for indigenous voices to be heard, to be lifted up, and the course of her history be corrected. Matoaka was the first documented missing and murdered indigenous woman but she certainly was not the last. Native American women face murder rates more than 10 times the national average. Four out of five indigenous women have experienced violence in their lifetimes, and more than half of them have experienced sexual violence. Murder is the third leading cause for death in indigenous women from ages one to 19. So this isn't a thing of the past. It's a problem today. And by telling Matoaka's story correctly, we're putting our foot down and saying no more. This won't be brushed under the rug anymore. We will be heard. So I was two when the movie Pocahontas was released, but I do remember it being one of the first movies that I ever saw and I did really like it. Being an indigenous little girl, I remember thinking that that was the only movie that had somebody like me, but they weren't really like me. It was confusing, but I was lucky in that my parents were good about raising me and my culture and telling me the truth. I was taught at a young age that I'm native to this land, that I'm not Indian and certainly not a savage. They taught me our culture was beautiful, but the other little kids around me didn't grow up going to powwows and fancy dancing with their cousins, being taught the truth of our existence. So I also did experience the movie through their eyes. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely been the subject of the Indian princess stereotype. I mean, what indigenous woman really hasn't in some way or another? And there's a couple ways to answer this. The Indian princess stereotype is that of this mysterious, sex cat woman from the woods who's ready to pounce on any man who's looking for freedom or adventure or enlightenment. So yeah, I've experienced that. But more than that, going back to the movie and how I kind of experienced the movie through their eyes as well as my own, the kids around me only knew about natives um, by what they saw in Pocahontas. And they projected that onto me. Some of them were really fascinated and some of them did take the side of the colonizers. So when they'd find out my heritage, I'd often be called Pocahontas, and sometimes I didn't mind, but then sometimes they would use it to tease me. Sometimes they would do a fake war cry and ask me where my costume was. Sometimes they would ask me to prove myself or to go back to my teepee, which I was sure to correct them that my tribe lived in wigwams. Sometimes they'd call me savage or stupid Indian. Sometimes they'd throw rocks at me. But the worst part is when they would accuse me of lying because they thought natives were something of the past, like dinosaurs or like a mythical creature. So sometimes being called Pocahontas was nice because at least they saw me. I mean, I'd like to see this project up in the big screens, in front of Disney, everywhere. I think this is really just the beginning of reclaiming what is ours, our culture and our stories. What impact do I hope this project will have? Well, I hope it wakes people the fuck up. Sorry, I don't know if I can cuss. So, I I hope this project wakes people up. It's astounding to me that even amongst my peers, people do not know that anything is even wrong with the movie Pocahontas. It's time to decolonize this world by telling the truth. No holding back. I think the correction of the story of Pocahontas will mean a lot to young indigenous women. It means a lot to me. I hope it means that you believe that there is more than enough space for you. There is more than enough room for you to be boldly, beautifully, ferociously you. That your voice matters, your truth matters, your pain matters, your joy matters, your story matters, and you matter. That we're not something of the past. That our ancestors are strong within us and around us. That we are the daughters that our ancestors fought for and they hoped for. And yeah, many of us were displaced from our land, disconnected from our culture, and had our traditional ways stolen from us by colonialism and 
white supremacy, but they cannot take our power. Our time is now to reconnect to our roots, to reclaim our heritage and take back what's ours. I hope non-indigenous people take away truth from this. Hopefully have some sort of reckoning. To non-indigenous people, do you even know whose land you're on? I always say that knowledge is power and acknowledgement is the first step. What tribes are currently in your area? Respond to survival needs of indigenous people. Support organizations that return land to indigenous communities. Support indigenous creators and artists. Put your money where your mouth is. I was a screenwriter for the Missing Matoaka Project, meaning I rewrote the script of Pocahontas, including voiceover pieces spoken as Matoaka, layered with truth and hopefully a bit of entertainment. I was asked to write the correct story of Matoaka, which took a lot of research and emotional labor, but it was very, very worth it, and I was honored to do it. I'm a storyteller. I tell my stories and I tell other people's stories. I'm an actress, I'm an artist, I'm a writer. And for as long as I can remember, I've had a deep connection with Pocahontas. I was often called Pocahontas growing up and have always been adamant about telling her story correctly because I was quite young when I learned the truth about her life. As a kid, a teenager and a young adult, I'd always find myself in, in defense or in conversations defending uh, misinformation about her. Even a few years ago, I was um, a part of this theatrical that was based off of correcting the history and the stories of Disney princesses, um, and Pocahontas was included, and I was cast as her. So somehow, in some way, I always knew that this time would come when I'd be able to tell her truth. Matoka and I are from different tribes, but somehow I felt very deeply, deeply connected to her. And through this experience, much like method acting, I had to channel her. I had to embody her story as well as live in my own. During the writing process, I felt like a bit of me melded with a bit of Pocahontas. It was an honor to write her story, but it was also challenging. Many days I spent on the verge of tears, you know, writing down about her, her short life and, you know, the invasion and the, her eventual kidnapping and rape and murder. The last day of writing when I was finishing the script and I was writing over top of the horrible song, Savages, I broke down. Tears were flowing as I really, really was feeling the weight of her short life. How she must have grieved that everything she knew was just gone. Everything she knew and loved was just taken from her. How she was used and abused and for over 400 years, her story has been convoluted into this insane, sick romance. She was only 10 when they arrived. She was barely 20 when she was murdered. I was also reminded of an encounter I had um, when I was a little, little kid with my very first best friend. On a play date, he informed me that he no longer liked natives and he wanted to be a cowboy. He told me I was a savage and that he wanted to kill me. Throughout the process, I felt it all. Her, me, us. But it was worth it. The truth was worth it. Matoaka may now rest in power knowing that her true story has been told and her legacy will be forever known. This wasn't about me. Maybe in some small part it was. This was about Matoaka and for all indigenous people to be reminded who they are, that they are seen, known, and loved. This is a reminder that we are powerful and that we are still here. We carry our ancestors with us in our blood and in our spirits. We cannot be broken. We are not broken. Rest in power, Matoaka. Chimigwech.